Hi, I'm Cole Hitt, and this is my VHS collection. I've currently got about 17,000 VHS, and this is half of that, which are some of my personal favorites and some of the more sentimental movies to me. We'll start off with some of my favorites over here that I keep in these cases. These are kind of the holy grails of VHS, in my opinion. You've got your first edition Jaws sealed here extremely rare to find sealed even harder to find in this type of condition this right here is special not a huge blockbuster title but it is one of the first vhs that ever came out and it does have the magnetic watermark which is extremely rare to see this really cool beatles let it be extremely rare vhs to find this came out right after the or right before the band broke up so they had to recall most of these out of the retail stores and pull them off the shelf so that's make this makes this a little rarer other good ones you got a first edition goonies in there you got a second edition 2001 space odyssey one of my favorite vhs the cover art is great on this extremely rare to find sealed night of the creeps this 1982 first commercial release, Star Wars, sealed. Extremely rare to find. Got the Sandlot screener, really neat. Land Before Time screener. Planet of the Apes, and the first Planet of the Apes, magnetic. Uh, you've got Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade Super VHS. A VHS that came out with the Super VCR. An extremely rare variant of the first Batman release. This is a compliments of Diet Coke. I got Weekend at Bernie's signed by the whole cast. I love that. That's one of my favorite. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. This screening cassette of Scent of a Woman signed by Al Pacino. He won the Academy Award for this, so this is pretty special to have him sign that. One of the rarer tapes in this whole room is this E.T. edition that was a rental car edition. This would have come with your rental car for you to watch inside the car. I didn't even know they had VCR players in your rental car. Yeah, that's uh, that was probably a special upgrade. And then he got E.T. with it. Robocop screening preview. I love the cover art on this. So this would have been uh, sent to the video store and the video store would have decided how many copies of Robocop they were gonna order. My favorite movie of all time, The Royal Tenenbaums. This is signed by Gene Hackman, who plays Royal Tenenbaum. You've got a first edition Halloween here. School Ties, I remember seeing this when I was a kid, thinking that was the coolest movie, with Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Brendan Fraser. Here's a sealed copy of Dazed and Confused screening cassette. Extremely rare to find sealed like that. Stand By Me, I'll never forget seeing that when I was a kid. The Day the Earth Stood Still, here's an original copy of Magnetic Release, that's 1978. Gumby, I hunt Gumby VHS. Do you think there are many people like you that hunt Gumby VHS? No, probably not, yeah. Ghostbusters, promotional copy. This would have been sent to the video store to see how many copies they wanted. This is uh, an Academy Awards screener for Die Hard extremely rare to find this is one of the only copies I've ever seen open so I don't think any would exist sealed punch drunk love Academy Award screener and then boogie nights Academy Award screener five different variants of alien so for this alien you've got the backside Fox video watermarks this one you've got the CBS Fox watermarks this one, you've got the backside Fox video, and then you've got the bottom CBS Fox blue. And so is this common, or was this just with the major blockbusters where there's so many variants? Yeah, more so with the major blockbusters because they released so many of them. For instance, if they released one, then a year later they were releasing more, they would just recycle 
the sleeve, but they would put different watermarks and different wraps on it. History of violence, one of my favorite to collect. I'm a, like Gumby, I'm always looking for history of violence. Significant of history of violence, this is the last film that was ever released on VHS in 2006. We've got some of the first VHS that were ever produced. These are the magnetic releases. Uh, these were the 1978 to 1980, 81 copies. Sound of Music, Patton, and MASH were the first three films released on VHS in America. So if you were to find a sealed copy of any of those three, you're, you're setting on a great VHS. Followed by some of the media release. These were uh, some of the original early releases of VHS right here. These two companies, Media and Magnetic. What does the artwork look on those? Are they just white cases? These, that's the best, that's the best reason to collect these old media because the artwork is great. Chinatown, I'm a huge fan of, and just look at how many different variations of Chinatown there are. It's pretty incredible. Your first, whoops, your first release, First Blood, is this Thorn EMI clamshell. It, I've never seen one of these sealed. Ghostbusters, very sought after VHS, sealed condition, all the different variants, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This is a European release. This was the first copy of Harry Potter to come out. This was 2004. Anything released 2000 to 2006 is, is pretty rare because there just weren't a lot of them made. Godfather, so they released them as individual and then the trilogy started to come around and there's probably four or five different trilogies and collector sets of The Godfather. Here's a good example, Karate Kid Part 2. All of these look the same, but they're all three different. You've got your rarest of the rare, which is your promo copy. Then you've got your first edition with the backside watermarks vertical. And then you've got your third edition with the side watermarks. Each of them have their own rarity. Obviously, the later one is probably easier to find than the other two, but Karate Kid is extremely rare to find. Lethal Weapon, so the earlier Warners had the big watermarks that kind of come across the front like this, and maybe the back. Uh, then it transitioned into the bottom. So one sign for someone out there a new collector is always look for watermarks that are vertical or horizontal on the VHS that's your first editions and earlier copies everything later started to put everything on the bottom this is one of my favorite Mike Tyson knockouts here I've got uh, you know the Green Bay Packers Super Bowl VHS to the Green Bay Packer fan out there wouldn't you love to have this Princess Bride has been a huge title so far I'm seeing out there in the market. Everybody's loving Princess Bride. Mad Max, first edition Vestron. If you were to find one of these sealed, that would be a Holy Grail type VHS for sure. And in most of the cases of the ones that happen to be sealed, were they just kind of store or promo copies that nobody ever opened or did people actually buy multiple ones, one that they played and one that they kept sealed. You run into a few, actually a few people that would buy one to watch and then one to collect. And that's kind of what I did. I had the opportunity while my dad worked at Walmart and Sam's Club to see all of these movies come out and hit the floor with the discount that he would get. I would try to snatch up everything I could. When VHS first came out, they were about $70, $80, some of the first VHS. And, you know, even in the mid 90s, VHS were $25, $30, which was expensive at the time. Rockies. Rocky has been a huge title so far in this market. Everybody loves the Rocky. One of my favorites. Classic. If you can find one of the first edition Rockies, you'll be looking for these uh, CBS Fox big boxes. Royal Tenenbaums, I collect. I collect a lot of Royal Tenenbaums and Rushmores just because those are two of my favorite movies of all time. I hoard them for some reason. I, I see them and then I gotta have them. This Party of Five, 
This is one of my this is one of my favorite VHS just because of uh, this guy on the back. It came with its own tissue pack, just in case uh, you know it was going to be a, a cry fest. Starship Troopers, huge, iconic, cult favorite. Here's uh, the Academy Awards screener for that, which it didn't it didn't win any Academy Awards. The Shining. Love The Shining. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was a huge fan of that as a kid. So then it became all about collecting each episode or tape from the series. And I, I think I'm only one or two tapes away from having the whole series. Top Gun. That's a huge title right now. I knew how popular it was going to be, so I tried to collect every different type of variation I could of it. Here's a great, rare title, Diet Pepsi promo. The first edition Wizard of Oz, really neat. Here we get into some of my more uh, substantial collections of uh, different titles like Star Wars. I've got every variation of Star Wars from 1982 to now. There is 14 releases of Star Wars from 1982 to 1992. And again, it helps to have this type of collection when I'm grading, because if I haven't seen something before, or, you know, if I notice the corner on this one is, is damaged and I get one that isn't damaged, then I come look and I can, I can cross examine and compare and contrast all of this stuff. Here's some of my favorite horror movies, some of the more collectible horror movies. Like you've got uh, Christmas Evil. I love this cover art. That's the beta and this is the VHS. Some of the rare horror movies out there are these old wizard video or midnight video, uh, big box. Gorgor Girls. These are, talk about some classic cover art, are these old horror movies. So these large boxes were literally just called Big Box. Yep. Big Box VHS. Not a very creative name, just... No. Pretty self-explanatory. I Spit on Your Grave. That's a huge cult classic. I don't know that I've ever seen any of these old uh, horror movies sealed at all. Here you've got some of the rarest horror films on the planet. This is a first edition Nightmare on Elm Street sealed. I've got this one sealed. I got lucky enough to find one sealed a few years ago. The biggest tell sign between the first edition and second edition, when they look the same, is the bottom. So the first edition has the bottom flat, the second edition does not. That type of detail is what I'm hoping to educate the consumer on more and more as this market grows, is just what to look for. Friday the 13th here. So you've got what looks like, what look like the same exact VHS. Maybe you can tell a little bit of difference between this Paramount is a little smaller than that one. So then you dive into, well, why is this one smaller? So then you investigate it a little bit more. You turn it over, boom, we've got the uh, bigger watermarks on the, on the back. So that means this was early, very early. I, I love these old Paramount watermarks. But again, were they doing it with a purpose or just, it just happenstance? It just happenstance and different distributors or distribution centers over the country would do different things. Here is your first edition copy of uh, Friday the 13th, Gatefold. I've never seen one of these sealed. Wait, what did you say it was called? Gatefold? So, <clears throat> this is a gatefold when the front opens like this. It probably makes it even harder to have in good condition, because that seems like it could be very, very fragile. Mm. Gate. Big time. If you find these gate, e any title, any Paramount title with this gatefold, snatch it up. Rare. Signature editions. So, signature editions means all of these are autographed by somebody. Like Caddyshack 2. I had Jason uh, Silverman sign this. Son-in-law, here's a good one signed by Polly Shore. Really neat. Here's Chris Evans on Fantastic Four. Kind of a big box office flop, but cult classic now because Chris Evans is obviously Captain America, so here's his, you know, other Marvel role as Johnny Storm. Scream variant signed by Nev Campbell with uh, Sydney on it. Jason Alexander, I had him sign on Seinfeld's face and put George on there. I've acquired most of these over the last couple decades, but 
when COVID hit and the Comic Con started to close down, all these celebrities started doing send in services. So it was just like, oh man, I can send in two or three VHS and have them sign it. This is perfect. You've got your 1989 Back to the Future. And again, you can tell by the early and late from the watermarks. That's an early watermark, that's a later one that didn't have the box around it. Back to the Future, there's always going to be a following for that. Uh, obviously, I hoarded them because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Then you've got these special 1995, which are pretty rare, actually. So what's different about these 1995s is they still have the MCA logo up here, but they have the Universal watermarks. Indiana Jones, another one of my favorite movies. I've got the Japanese version of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Here you've got your uh, special collector's edition, Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is extremely rare to find sealed like this. What's different about these, again, they had the backside watermarks across them. There are so many different variations of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You've got at least six variations of this just right here within this. This is probably the most widely recognized trilogy of Star Wars. One of the most popular ones. Later release stuff is easier to find than the older, but Star Wars is just so prolific that some of this stuff is, be every everything Star Wars is becoming more and more rare. This one, probably one of the rarest VHS in this room. Oh jeez, Pulp Fiction's thrown at me. Is this was, a, I guess, a gift? that Rupert Murdoch gave all of his employees. It's a trilogy, Star Wars trilogy, for Christmas. You Pretty just found that online? Yes, I found this with that note attached to it. Uh, in the, it didn't say anything about the note in the description. I just thought that that was so neat. Pulp Fiction, one of my all-time favorite movies. There's three different variations of Pulp Fiction. I try to collect each one. Uh, multiple times sealed and unsealed. There's the special collector's edition, and then there's the original, and then there's the letterbox edition. Pulp Fiction is becoming more and more scarce. VHS is just a natural extension of your what you're passionate about with film. Here you get into a lot of the TV episodes like Gilligan's Island, Power Rangers, Pokemon, Star Trek, Brady Bunch, I Love Lucy. So yeah, I collect all that old stuff. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's uh, my VHS collection. When I'm looking up here at the wall and I look at Clarissa Explains It All, I mean, I remember watching that on Nickelodeon every night. Milo and Otis, I remember me and my mom going to see that movie in theaters when I was a little kid and I loved it. I'm a huge Arkansas Razorback fan. I'm from Arkansas, so any Razorback VHS I can find, I, I snatch it up. How many do you think you'll end up with? Gosh, at this point, if this market really takes off, I. I I see myself just continuing to acquire and acquire. As the market grows, more and more VHS will start coming out of the woodwork. I think that's what I'm most excited about. And there's probably stuff that I haven't seen um, that I look forward to seeing kind of surface.